So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to become a Christian. Many people may be inquiring and wondering, you know, into exactly how one can become a Christian for themselves. And there might be varying opinions. But in this video today, I'm going to talk about three steps that are biblically based and based on the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ to become a Christian. Let's go ahead and start with the first of the three. The first one is repentance. And not just repentance, but repentance in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so what, what is the basis of this? For example, if we look at Luke chapter 24, verse 47, Jesus said, and quote, and that repentance and remission of sins be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem, end quote. Okay, so in Luke chapter 24, the Lord Jesus Christ goes to his disciples, and it says in that chapter that he opened their mind so that they could understand the scriptures and know that all the ancient Jewish prophecies and Psalms were talking about him and that the, the Christ must suffer and die and be risen on the third day and to go forth and preach repentance and remission of sins to all nations in his name, starting at Jerusalem. Okay, so in the Greek word, uh, the Greek Bible, it doesn't say he opened their minds of the disciples. It says he opened their noose, which was their spiritual mind or their, their highest level of divine faculty and reasoning and knowing. And knowing it, and not just an intellectual level, but knowing at a, at a spiritual level that he was the Christ that the Old Testament scriptures foretold, that the Lord God had announced the coming of his son for hundreds of years in the ancient scriptures and prophecies and psalms. And so the Lord Jesus, in his glorified resurrected body, opened the minds, the noose of his disciples so that they could really understand that. And then he commanded that they pre preach repentance and remission of sins to all nations in his name, starting in Jerusalem. So the first step to become a Christian is to repent in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you can repent to God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ secretly on your own, or you can do it in terms of confession. I'm an Orthodox Christian, so a holy sacrament of confession to a priest. Now, the priest does not have any power to forgive your sins at all. That's not what Orthodoxy preaches. But um, the priest is a witness to your confession. You're confessing to God in the name of Jesus Christ, but the priest is your witness. He is witnessing your confession. So there's power in the sacrament. In fact, uh, Jesus said, anywhere two or more Christians are gathered in my name, I am with them. Okay. And so the ancient church used to say, if one Christian is no Christian, that everything needs to be done communally to confess your sins one to another. So you can you can confess in private. You could also it would be highly beneficial to find a brother or sister in Christ to confess your sins to. Um, and so why do we have that sacrament? For for example, in the Orthodox Church and and there there are other churches that have this uh, practice of confession to a priest or to a clergy member. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for it. You know, what you're really doing when you're confessing to another person, you're confessing to God in witness of the other person. What you're really doing is affirming, you know, like you're declaring publicly or to another believer that, you know, you're, you're, you're declaring your sin, that you're not hiding anything. In the Gospel of Luke, the Lord says, for everything that is kept secret will be made manifest. So there will be a day when all of our sins will be disclosed, we can't hide anything from God. God knows already knows everything. But there's power in two or more Christians gathering together to confess their sins one to another. It, it also holds the person to account because they know that if they keep sinning, they would have to keep confessing to another person that sin. So by actually confessing to God with a witness, it's far less likely that the person would repeat would keep repeating that sin because they know it's going to be disclosed. The first thing is, again, to repent of your sins in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so repentance shouldn't have a negative connotation. It should actually be seen as a positive. You know, a lot of times people say, oh, you Christians, you're always talking about sin and repentance. 
But actually, uh, it's like saying, if I've got a poison arrow in my side, I need to go to the hospital, okay? There's nothing wrong. I mean, you know, it's like, I need to be healed. That's the whole idea. And, and if I don't even acknowledge that I have a, a poison arrow lodged in my side, then how am I ever going to be healed of that? Okay, so it's really just about healing. That's That's what repentance is. God wants to heal you. I mean, he's just waiting for the opportunity to forgive you of your sins. Um, that's the good news, is that the good news was that Jesus came to forgive sins. And, you know, it's like a two-way operation. You know, you, you, have to con you have to repent of the sin before it can be forgiven. But God is very willing to, and very anxious to, to forgive sin, actually. And that's why the Lord Jesus Christ came into the world to, to, save, to save us from sin. Okay, so that's step one. Step two, baptism and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, the biblical references for these would be Matthew 3.16, where uh, Jesus was baptized in the River Jordan. And when he was baptized, the Spirit of God descended upon him like a dove. So basically what happens at Holy Baptism is that you are not just baptized, but, you know, in the Orthodox Church, there's also chrismation and the gift of the seal of the Holy Spirit. But at a minimum, you know, there, there should be baptism. And at a Holy Baptism, there is the gift of the Holy Spirit, just as Jesus, just as the example of Jesus himself, the Lord himself was baptized, and the Spirit of God descended upon Jesus Christ like a dove. And again, that's in Matthew 3.16. So again, people say, well, do I really need to be baptized? Well, I mean, it is possible to be saved in theory. Well, not in theory, but it is possible, like the, the sinner on the cross next to Jesus who confessed his sins, Jesus said, on this day you will be with me in paradise. So, you know, it is possible, at least we have that one case in, in the Bible of someone being saved by Jesus who wasn't baptized. But I would say you would want to, I mean, you wouldn't want to put off your salvation until the moment of death. I mean, why risk it? There, there are cases of people like, you know, at the, at the hour of death or the minute of death, they may do a deathbed confession to Jesus. And, and I'm sure anyone who calls upon the Lord will be saved. But I don't see why you would want to. I mean, don't play games with your life and don't play games with your eternal salvation. I would say don't wait and put it off. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ himself was baptized. And so we should follow his example as best we can and also follow in that, and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, so that therefore we have the Comforter with us for the rest of our lives, to give us peace, to give us wisdom, to allow us to walk the Christian life. So we don't want to just, you know, do the bare minimum. We want to actually live the full measure of the Christian life, our entire lives. And having the gift of the Holy Spirit at baptism and the Holy Spirit dwelling within us allows us to, to live the fullest Christian life we possibly can. And when you sin, the Holy Spirit will convict you of your sin. Okay, so are Christians going to sin? Yes, they're going to sin. But the Christian will have the Holy Spirit that will convict them of their sin. And will will bring that person back to alignment with God much quicker because, you know, uh, when the Christian sins, the, the Christian is going to experience godly sorrow, and they're going to want to correct that sin as quickly as possible because of the Holy Spirit. And so that's why we are baptized. And to or Orthodox Christians, baptism isn't just symbolic. It's a, it's a holy mystery, and there's power. There's power in the sacraments. There's power in confession. There's power in baptism. It is not just some symbolic notion. And so in the Orthodox Church, there is full body immersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, just as the Lord commanded. And that's the other thing. The other scripture, biblical scripture to back this up would be Matthew 28, 19, where um, the Lord Jesus says, baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost to all nations. So baptizing in immersion, that's what baptism is. It isn't sprinkling, it's immersion as the Lord Jesus was immersed in the river, full body immersion, and the Lord commanded, the Lord Jesus Christ commanded to baptize all nations in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost.
or the Holy Spirit, okay? So this is not optional. This is something the Lord commanded. He commanded us to, to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. There is power in baptism. And so sprinkling or, you know, denominations that think there's no power in it, that's just not, that's not biblical and that's not keeping in line with Jesus. If there wasn't in power, if there wasn't power in it, the Lord would have never commanded us to do it. And he wouldn't have done it himself. There is power in baptism. And that's why the Lord was baptized and we should follow his example. And he commanded us to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, so that's step two. Step one, repentance. Step two, baptism in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit at baptism. That we can fully live the Christian life. And number three is Holy Communion. And that is taking the blood and the body of the Lord into you. The biblical re reference for this would be John 6.53, quote, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Okay, John 6.53. The Lord says, if you do not eat his flesh and drink his blood, you will have no life in you. So in the Orthodox Church, we call this Holy Communion, and we've been doing this for 2,000 years, just as at the Last Supper, when the apostles, uh, Jesus broke bread and gave wine to his apostles at the Last Supper, and he said, drink this uh, wine and eat this bread in remembrance of me. This is my body and my blood, okay? Do this in remembrance of me. And in John 6, 53, the Lord clearly says that except ye eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Son of Man, you will have no life in you. Okay. So again, this is not optional. This isn't like, oh, maybe we'll do it once a year, or maybe some members will partake, others won't. No, it's clear. If you don't do it, you have no life in you. And so in the Orthodox Church, at a minimum, well, we do this every week. Sometimes divine liturgy is multiple days in the week. Um, but again, you would want to take the blood and the body of the Lord as much as possible to have life in you. I don't see why anyone would not want to have life in them. And I know there are some denominations that don't even do the Eucharist. And I can't even understand that because the Lord clearly commanded that if you do not eat his flesh and drink his blood, you will have no life in you. Okay. And the other thing in John 6, 54, quote, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. End quote. Again, quote, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. End quote. So again, this is, I don't see how any more clear you could get. The Lord is saying, eat my flesh, drink my blood. And if you don't do it, you have no life in you. And if you do it, you will have eternal life and I will raise you up on the last day. You will abide in me. I will abide in you. My blood is in you. My, my, my life is in you. My life force is in you. Okay. So these sacraments are not symbolic. They are powerful. They are life-changing. They, they are not to be taken lightly. And so in the Orthodox Church, when we take Holy Communion, we do so with reverence, faith, and the fear of God, that we partake worthily of the blood and the body of the Lord. This is not a casual thing. We do not take it lightly, okay? Because we are literally receiving the life energy and the lifeblood of Christ in us so that we can fully live the Christian life to its full measure, okay? So again, um, three things. Repentance in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in secret and also to another brother in Christ to fully cleanse you of your sins, to heal you. God is waiting to heal you. Okay. Number two, baptism and the gift of the seal of the Holy Spirit and baptism by immersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit to allow you to live the Christian life. Because you cannot live the Christian life in and of yourself. You need to have the Holy Spirit dwelling within you to live the Christian life. And number three, Holy Communion. Taking the blood and the body of the Lord. To take his blood and body and life force into you. 
and he abideth in you, and he will raise you up on the last day, and you will have eternal life in him. And that as you do these sacraments, you will grow closer and closer and closer to the Lord, okay? Your whole life, you can, you can live the full joy, the full measure of Christ. And if you sin or you, mis you make a mistake, you repeat step one, which is repentance, and you keep doing the Holy Communion, and you keep in the, in the Word of God, and you keep communion with your brothers and sisters in Christ, so that you can continue to grow and become more like the Lord yourself as you live the Christian life. So again, those are the three steps, repentance, holy baptism and the gift of the Holy Spirit, and holy communion, taking the blood and the body of the Lord into you so that you may have eternal life. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, please share with a friend, and I will see you in the next one.